Hey everyone, Derek here. In today's video, I want to cover something I like to keep an eye on and control when using subtractive saturation in DaVinci Resolve. And that something is this, the higher saturation levels of an image. So these here that are on the outer edge of the signal when viewed on a vector scope. Or for a more extreme example, these here in this image. So the subtractive method, I would say, has become the most popular way of adding saturation, and for good reason. When you add saturation, colors get deeper and richer compared to a more additive method, like the default saturation control, which makes colors brighter as they get more saturated. So most people are going to prefer something like this compared to something like this. But as with any saturation method where you're making adjustments globally, by the time you get the bulk of the image the way you want it, you may have pushed your outer saturation values a little too far, either for technical reasons or for creative reasons. So it's a good idea to be able to control that. Resolve has a couple of ways to control that, but those are mostly targeted for the older style of saturation where things get brighter. For example, Color Boost targets the lower saturated levels more than the higher ones, but again, increases in saturation make things brighter. There's also the Sat versus Sat curve, where you could target different saturation levels. For example, boosting more the middle of the image and pulling down the higher ranges. But again, this applies more to the additive saturation model. So the challenge is finding a way to do something similar with subtractive saturation. I'm going to go over a few ways that are available to do that and give my thoughts on each. But first, just a quick overview of common ways to add subtractive saturation. There are three that I use personally. The first is the HSV method. And before I change this, I should mention that I'm working color managed here with CSTs and my timeline color space is DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. With the HSV method, we're changing color space to HSV and disabling channels 1 and 3. So that way we are only controlling the saturation channel. And then you can use gain to increase the saturation in a subtractive manner. The second method, I'll use another note here, is the global sat control in the color size tool. There are also these two controls here that allow you to adjust how that works. Those are based on luminance. And I'll reset that. And number three would be the film look creator. If you go to clean slate, you can use the subtractive sat slider to add subtractive saturation. So when it comes to controlling those higher saturation values when using these methods, there are a couple ways we can go about this. First, if you're using the HSV method, which I believe this node is still correctly set up for that. If you wanted to, some people do this, you can use the curves as kind of a sat versus sat curve. While this can work, it's something that I would advise caution with because it can be easy to break your image, but you could pull down the higher ends and increase a targeted area to add saturation to in a subtractive method. But again, use caution with that. You could do the same thing with gamma and gain controls in a slightly smoother way, but again, in an HSV space, Pushing things like gamma can work to a point, but can also cause problems pretty quickly. So use with care. But for an example of that, we could pull down, say gain, and then increase gamma. So if I turn this on and off, you can see how this range is getting boosted while this outer range stays put or even comes back in. And you can use this same concept with the color warper I'm going to reset this node so it's back to normal. And moving over to the color warper, you can use any amount of points that you think work 
Well, I usually use 12. And if you switch the color model here to HSV, you can use this like a sat versus sat curve. Again, just handling with care. I'll make this bigger so it's easier to see. So with this, you could pick an area that you want to saturate more, such as these flowers here. And you'll get a point here, and then you can click this ring here, and you'll get the entire ring for that saturation level. And you can boost that as much as you feel is necessary. And this will affect this area more than the outer area. It's a little on and off here. And if you want to go even farther and control this outside range, you can do the same thing, click on an outside point, and click on the ring here to get all of these selected and decrease this. So on and off here, you can see on the vector scope how this is increasing and this is actually decreasing. So another way to control it, and also another one to use with care as stretching an HSV space like this can cause problems if done too much. Another option that I like to use is to combine the SAT versus SAT curve with a global subtractive saturation adjustment. I'm going to reset this. I'm just going to use uh, the color slice tool because it's easier to set up and I think a lot of times gives better results compared to HSV. So I'm going to add some saturation here. And now in a node next to it, I'm going to go to the SAT versus SAT curve and use this to decrease the higher saturated levels. And this does have, if you do it this way, this does have an effect of decreasing part of the image probably that you want to increase as well. So if you're not worried about a little increase here, you can always counteract that with just a little bump here. I usually like to keep skin around the same place, and that's usually right around here in the color space that I'm working in. So if we select both of these and I just turn these on and off, you can see how the middle of the image got a lot more saturation, while the outer ranges didn't move too far. And you can adjust this as needed. It's also important to note that by decreasing this with the sat versus sat curve, since it's using the other model, it'll actually darken the colors that are being desaturated. So consider that if you're going to use this. Whereas if you use an HSV model, it's going to do the opposite. When you add saturation, it'll get darker. When you decrease saturation, it'll get brighter. And one more option to look at that I think is kind of a fun one is going back to the Film Look Creator. Under Clean Slate. And I should mention, even when you use Clean Slate, you can watch the vector scope here. I'll turn it on and off. It's not exactly clean. There is some compression going on there. So consider that when you are considering this tool. But something that is nice about this is that you can increase your subtractive saturation and decrease richness, where richness only affects the higher saturated values. So effectively, you can do the same thing and play these off of each other. So if I turn this on and off, you can see this Part of the image got a huge boost, but these higher ends didn't really go anywhere and got compressed. That may be something you want. It might not be, but it's a, it's a pretty nice option. So those are a few techniques to consider when adding subtractive saturation in DaVinci Resolve while also controlling the higher saturated values. There is one additional thing I'd like to mention, is that I think it's important to consider your starting point before you even get to using these tools. And for that, I have a more extreme version here of this issue. With images like this one, with really high saturated levels that can be hard to control, you can kind of put yourself behind that eight ball just by your selection of an ODT. So I've lined up some different options here just to present that show the differences in a case like this. So this is Resolve's standard CST with saturation compression on. You can see it's helping a little bit here, but still a lot to work with. And here is the CST without saturation compression. You can see it's really, we've got some ugliness here, I would say, that would be tough to deal with. And here is the ACES2 ODT, the ACES transform. And here is 
the same transform with additional ACES gamut compression. If you want to go outside of Resolve, here's 2499 DRT. You can download that for free. And here is Open DRT, again, another DRT that you can download for free. And you can see how all of these handle those higher saturated values a little differently. So something to consider before even jumping into the other tools. So that's what I have for today. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.